dominant forms of hip hop, thin, bubble gum like, hollow, shallow, stimulating body, no stirring of soul, which is very, very sad, because young people need soul stirring music. Yeah, like what up? Luxurious. Drums and ammo. Ghetto. Gifty. And bottom. It's a bad up, baby. Uh. <laughs> Chat. DJ Ambush, we're at it. The show's called This Down the Third. We got the homie Isaiah Mustafa in the house. Hey, 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 hey. So this is the this is pretty much like the, the first season or second season of the podcast. Really kind of like, uh, as far as visual, this is like the first season. So you're kicking off everything. You're like the premiere of this whole show. Hey, you know that's saying? an honor. We popping a cherry real Jump. quick in the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. So this is what we're going to do. Isaiah Mustafa was brought to me pretty much through, I, I'm going to say Astu. That was kind of, mm -hmm. that was like the, that's like our link right there. I think so. You know, and over the last couple, I mean, I guess over the year, I've been playing music featuring you and, and I stumbled on number 36 of the yeah. 37 challenge that uh, water on me with a Bruh, Jada you, you You stay keeping that in rotation. Yeah. <laughs> that shit makes my day like every few weeks. Oh man, I'm t <laughs> that's tight, man. It's good to hear that though, because it's kind of like, it's kind of becoming like a little community in there. You know, I see cats chatting mm -hmm. back and forth, like, like, oh, I see you up in there. I see what you're doing, uh -huh. you know? But we finally got to meet like in the physical at a Astu show, matter of fact, at a at Zoo Lab. So that's always right. good to be able to like really like link up with cats uh, in the physical, especially now yeah. with everything on the um on the lockdown. So, man, so virtual past times like we can just be homies over the internet. You know what I mean? Mhm. Mm <laughs> but let's get in, man. I, I haven't even showed your face. There he goes, right there. Boom. Okay. There, he, there he goes. There he goes. And this is us, man. <laughs> so what I want to do first is. I want to get into some of the just some of the basic some of the basic history stuff, you know, like some of, those, some of those early influences. You know how it goes. You know the early. What, what was kind of the thing that kind of kicked you off in the very beginning? Into music. Mm -hmm. Uh, my family, bro. Um, my sister was like a straight prodigy, bro. Like at age four, she was. Um, teaching herself how to play guitar, how to play keys, how to write songs. She was performing at like five, like ill, you feel me? And um, my mom, raw ass singer, songwriter, my pops, uh, rapper, producer, rock shows with Pac and DMX. My grandma is like a activist, like hippie um, elder mm -hmm. who just be really using, like she, she writes songs. She, she been steeped in it from, she's from New York. Um, and like this, old hippie Woodstock type deal, you feel me? She and she throws a jam my whole life. She started a jam at her um at her house in South Berkeley by Ashby Bart um mm. every first Sunday of the month. Um <sighs> and so like she'll just have her whole house, every single room will be filled with hella musicians and they all just like be going around in circles um and like everybody turn and they'll either do like their own song or they'll do like a famous song or whatever but everybody will jam on it mm -hmm. and um so that was just kind of happening my whole life um it was it was until i was like seven um my i i didn't my pops didn't know about me i didn't have my pops i grew up in the house with just my mom and my uh and three of my sisters. I really have like 11 brothers and sisters. I think I, that my, my pops keeps busting them out. But like, um, I really grew up in the house with my mom and three sisters for the majority of my life. And um, it was it was real there, but I found my pops. On, I like knew his name at a certain point and I looked him up on YouTube because I knew he made music and I found one of his music videos and his YouTube video was up on was his name. And I was like, what? And so I hit him up. I DM'd him on YouTube in like 2006 or something. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Dad," and he was like, "Son." And then that was like how we that was like how we found each other and connected. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I got I really got to dedicate it to my family for real for for, for for putting me on. Honestly, I didn't think I was gonna do music though because 
it felt like because my sister was such a prodigy, um, mm. they were trying to make her famous, kind of, you know? Like, yeah. there was, like, this hope that she was going to be the breadwinner, you feel mm -hmm. me? Like, because we grew up real poor, you know what I mean? Mm. And now she's over here just hella raw, and it's like, all right, it's our <laughs> chance, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and so that shit kind of turned me off, you know what I mean? Mm. I was kind of like, ugh, by the whole situation. They hear me singing around the house or doing my thing, be like, you know, you should, you should sing. And I'd be like, nah, fuck that. I ain't doing it. Um, but then it just kind of happened. It just kind of happened that way. So you're like, you're an MC, producer, vocalist. So which one, which one kicked in first? You know what I'm saying? Like, which one did you gravitate to? Well, that's, that is it's between. Um, I think really being an MC, um, because at like 14, I really started, uh, I started freestyling around that same time. I was, um, my sister, my oldest sister, Deja, was putting me on to uh, like the Illuminati, the New World Order, the Hidden Hand, teaching mm. me about the fucking world, you know what yeah. I mean? The and ISIS papers, like, all those. You feel yeah. me? All mm. that was <laughs> just blowing my whole shit, flipping my lid. And so I was just like, whoa. At the same time, I started freestyling, like some cats that I was rapping with. It was just like some fun shit, but like it quickly became like a channel and a, 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 a vessel for me to be able to express and feel like I needed to, I needed to say some shit. Like I needed to really, I had a, I had a purpose in it rather than just like, I'm just trying to be ill. Um, so like that really felt deep. Um, but also when I was little, like when I was in like first grade, after I had found my pops, um, he came and lived with me. Um, and my mom and my sisters for like, like a little while until like, you know, he, he relapsed and it, it was some whole fucking crazy shit. But like, basically when he came and moved in, he brought reason with him, um, the program. And <laughs> so he taught me how to make beats when I was in like first grade, like low key, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like my pop side, uh, we're Egyptian and I hadn't really been tapped in with that side hella much. So I remember just like making this beat that sounded hella of Egyptian in like mm. first grade. And I was just like, damn, I'm Egyptian. This is crazy. <laughs> this beat is crazy. And like, just like with being with my pops. But then that quickly like turned into some whole shit where we ended up like literally like while he was at work, leaving him, like leaving the house, like moving out of the house while he was at work. And then like he came back to just like nothing. Like it was, it was, it was crazy fucked up. We cool now but like mm -hmm. that shit was crazy i was not in control um mm -hmm. but then so basically that foreshadowed into later like when i was 14 when i was freestyling when that whole shit was happening my mom had a boyfriend at that time my mom always been fucking with these musician bros mm -hmm. and um uh, uh she had this bro who came and lived with us and he brought he brought the equipment he brought reason again that was the that was the next time i was introduced to it um, he brought Cubase, um, he brought a microphone, you feel me, all that. And he was just steady making beats on Reason all the time. And turns out his brother um, was uh, Ben Frost, the music coordinator at Youth Radio. You oh, feel dude, me? So that's, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's so then he's like, he's like, yo, you got to get into Youth Radio. I got to get you connected, right? And mm. so he gets me connected. And at this time, I was going to school. I was going to school in Walnut Creek, mm. right? I was out the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it was like every day after school, I'm just getting on BART, sliding to Oakland, and going to Youth Radio until I became uh, a teacher at Youth Radio, and I was there for hella years. And that's where, like, I was really able to, like, after after work or after, after Youth Radio, after the program, I just, like, find out about a cypher, go down the block, and just tap in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's crazy because so. we, we probably – we probably in youth radio at the same time because I've been there. I've been there since 2005, pretty much. Wow. Like, yeah, I went in. Well, first, first we went in there with, um, with my, with the DJ group, Oakland Faders. We had a, mm. a show there for like years. And then I stopped for a couple, a couple years. And then I came back with drums and ammo with the friendly fire. Wow. So, so the show is at, you know, youth radio. So I, I seen with, that because I yeah. seen the all day play connection. Mm -hmm. So I fool with Ben Frost like every week. You know, we, we go back and <laughs> forth. That's crazy, dude. So, That's the dude, man. That's yeah, the dude. No, I, got, the I, I, I definitely got to tap in because I've been like once I left, I was on some shit with like this one cat that I was really fucking with at the time. Um, 
And when we left, it was like we felt like we was about to go do hella shit. But mm. bro ended up, I ain't gonna drop his name, but bro mm-hmm. ended up really like fucking me over in a lot of ways. And mm-hmm. uh, I feel like I've been I've been disconnected from you for radio mm-hmm. since for, for 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 a minute. But that shit really like that shit did so much for me, bro. Ben Frost did so much for me. Dude, you know it's crazy like. There's a connect like Youth Radio really has a connection with a lot of things in the bank. A lot of things started at Youth Radio, so I don't know if anybody really like documented that. I might have to, I might have to be that person to really you know connect the dots because a lot of a lot of stuff came up out of Youth Radio for real. Be that person. Be that for person. For be real, that man. person. I, I remember uh, Roach Gigs, I am Sue. <laughs> Both track, those cats. Yeah, track, track academics. Track academics, and, yep. You know, 108, uh, 108K, you know? 108K, yeah, for real. Mm-hmm. 108K was like the, uh, like a, he worked there while I was there for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm, Most yeah. And then, and then, you know, uh, Zumbi, Zion I, he had a show yep. in there. He was always that, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That was when, um, that's kind of when I started, is when he had his radio show. Mm. And yeah, so, you know, Youth Radio, downtown Oakland, right there on Broadway. Right, yes, you know, sir. in the heart of everything. That's kind of one of those spaces. It's kind of one of those spaces that um, was, is like a real incubator, you know, for artists. Absolutely. And um, creatives, and, and they deal with d- different media platforms, so they teach you, you know, computer programming, um, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Music production, how to record production. your voice, journalism, how to use Photoshop, how to take pictures. Straight they up. They got you in health, uh, health workshops, learning about, like, uh, yoga and breathing too mm-hmm. they got case mm-hmm. managers so you could talk about what's going on at the crib which you can talk about what's going on at school they help with school they give job opportunities like everything bro everything I, I i was making money there too while i was there while i was just making beats in the room freestyling it you know what i mean like and you're linked up with um folks your age who are just like about that life you know what i mean and like yeah. want to yeah. want to be able to pursue it you know what i mean and yeah. finally have yeah. the options so it's like people are hungry yeah, it's a nice community. Nice community and a, a good, a good launch pad. So, uh, yeah. So let's talk about. Um, uh, I want to talk about the the thirty seven week challenge. Let's run it. Um, yeah, let's break that down because, like, like I want to know, like, did you, you, you said you recorded and you you recorded and produced everything. You did the artwork and all that. So what mm-hmm. kind of brought that? Uh, what brought that? Uh, that idea up to you? You know what I'm saying? What, what Man. kicked it off? in general i think a lot of artists um and i i just felt it happening to me like i was i was just hella sleeping on myself bro like i knew i had i had hella people being like where's that where's that song at because i was like a for so long i was doing the first friday shows i was throwing mad i was throwing hella shows every first friday you feel me with suru um and that was just mad years of performing but not releasing any music um, then I finally put out my album, um, Lips, and it was like, people was finally like, they, like, yes, like, we've been waiting for you to drop something, you know what I mean, mm. put something together. Um, and then after that album, like, I'd gone on tour in Hawaii with some of the homies, and we got put up by this one, bro, um, uh, Brian, he really hooked it up, and he, like, housed, like, seven of while like, during the tour or whatever, and then came back. And that was probably in like November of shit, 2020 or something like that. And then, I don't remember when COVID started, but COVID started like four months after I got back off that tour. And basically I had gone through a mania breakup. COVID was starting. I had been living uh, in my grandma's attic uh, down the street from Ashby Bart from, for like at least like five years, you know what I mean? Or like mm-hmm. coming on five years. Um, and the virus was just weird. I, and I wasn't nobody who was just always up in there by myself. I would have my homies through. We'd be making mad music, you know what I mean? And so, like, it was all, like, don't be around the elders during this time. And I was kind of feeling like she probably was ready to have me out, but she wasn't about to kick me out, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, please. so I was just, like, it was it was going through my head. And then this bro, Brian, who had put us up a hell of months before, hit me up and was just like, hey, bro, if you want to move out here, I'll put you up for free. Um, we could just make music. And he's he's hella raw at like martial arts, jujitsu, and Muay Thai. Mm. Um, he was like, we can learn martial arts, make hella music. And he's also like really good at like growing food. 
Um, mm. And we're just like, and just like, you feel me, get in the garden and, and, and do what we're supposed to be doing, you know, mm -hmm. type shit. And I was like, that sounds right. You know what I mean? So I pulled yeah. up out there. Um, and while I was there, just came out. Um, Tofu Jack came out. Jedi Imani came out. Um, and while we was out there, we was really just like, we was really supporting each other, you know, because nice. the lifestyle out there is a lot different than out here. You know what I mean? Yes, Everybody needs to be on that earthwork um, type of like hippy dippy vibe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, there's pros and cons to it. But mm -hmm. one thing that that was real was like at a certain point, like for, for a minute, bro, I wasn't on my phone like at all. Like. Like, for, like, a good four months of while I was out there, like, oh I was goodness. really just, like, I was just reflecting. I was crying a lot. I was thinking a lot. I was I was waking up in the middle of the night just, like, writing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I was, like, working with the earth. I was watching. I was I was paying attention to, like, things growing and getting my hands in the dirt and shit. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then it got to this certain point where um, I was laying there on the floor with tofu and uh the homie malik and um we basically i was just connected to the bluetooth speaker and i was playing all like these songs that i had semi done you know that were just like little things and they they both are like hella supportive of my music and we're like uh bro what are you gonna do with these or like they hear one and that they heard like hella times like just because they knew it but no one else did you know what i mean mm -hmm. they're like oh i love this one you know what i mean they're like when are you gonna you feel me? And they're like, why? And I'm like, bro, there's something about each one of these songs that I hate. Mm. And they're like, well, why don't you just fix that part? <laughs> and then I was like, that makes hella sense. <laughs> and then I kind of like, I stayed up, like, I stayed up all night. And it, I, I like started thinking about that shit that they were saying and like pondering it and realizing like, also the like, the environment in Hawaii is like really it's not it's like a retired type of environment you know what i mean people go there to retire people yeah. are like people aren't like don't have city dreams you know what mm. i mean don't have big city dreams you know mm -hmm. what i mean it took me it took me to be there to realize i was a city boy like i thought you feel me i thought i thought san francisco was the city you feel me i thought new york was the city, but like i'm like nah bro i'm on this island and i'm definitely a city boy like this is crazy <laughs> but basically I like, yeah, I stayed up and I got into this headspace. I haven't been on Instagram a hell long, but I was just like, I told my boy, I was like, hey, take a video of me real quick, bro, take a video. And he was like, all right. And like, I had him uh, press record and I was just like, you can probably still find this video on my IG, like deep down there. I just like grabbed a hula hoop. I started hula hoop and I was like, all right, y'all, I'm back. I'm done sleeping on myself. I'm done sleeping on y'all. I'm about to come back. I'm about to drop a song every week for the rest of my life. Woo. And then I was like, the rest of my life hold up that's a long ass time you know what mm. i mean and then i was like well the number 37 is like my angel number it follows me everywhere like it's my life path number it's just been a number that has stuck with me for hell of years mm. and i was like all right well let me just let me just go for 37 weeks let me start there you know what I mean? sure. and that's that's what started it off i thought that i had enough music to just go into it. i didn't think i was gonna make hella new music necessarily i yes, was like sir. oh yeah i'm gonna just finish and drop all these songs but like by like week four, I was like, shit, I ain't got no music. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then just started like making hella new shit because I was also super inspired and had all this momentum now. Um, but yeah, that, that's really what started it. And I, I'm very grateful that it that it got to happen. And then I moved back literally the 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 day it happened. So divine. I moved back the day that it was over. Oh, straight up. That's crazy. Okay, okay. Dude, so let's let's talk about some of the some of the collaborators because you, you you know you're throwing out names like break down yep. like tofu jack and jada money yeah break them down you know let, let 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 the people know some you know give some man if on. you out here if you out here you know jada you <laughs> know jada you know I mean? she's been holding it together for the longest since she was like 15 i met her when uh i was 17 she was 16 um throwing uh the second saturdays at the allen blueford center for justice um, on Telegraph in like 20, what, fifth, fourth, something like that. Um, show at People's Park that my uncle, uh, who lives at People's Park, um, is growing. 
directly after that, directly after that, like that night was the first second Saturday that they were throwing at Allen Blueford Center for Justice, oh, okay. which is which became a, a series that they did for years. You know what mm. I mean? That like where so many people came up in there. Like I seen Fred Hampton Jr. talk, it, like mm. speak in there. You know what I mean? Like it was it was a spot, um, and. Yeah, basically, like, that night, I remember going to that show, and, like, I felt my consciousness elevate. Like, I felt as though I got I got closer to my purpose. I found my people. I I was just, I was just, my, I felt my whole path, like, aligned. And, mm. and I'm really grateful for it because I was in a, I was in, like, a group at that time who was, they was cool, but, like, ended up hella fucking me over my equipment and, like, Honestly, at that time, um, really fucking up my relationship with Jada, actually, because um, who, who I've always really respected and just like cared to support and like honored um, as a pillar in the community, the person. Um, but basically for her 17th birthday, she had uh, like booked us to perform at La Pena mm -hmm. uh, in Berkeley. Yes. And um, yep. And so basically I was hella juiced. I was juiced as fuck. I was like, what? Jada wants to send her birthday. And at that spot, I always been wanting to go there. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. the mural on the outside, it's crazy. And um, so I'm hella juiced. And these bruhs like, without me even knowing, like get on the phone with her and like demand to go first. And like, we're just like a rap group of dudes. You feel me? And um, she got live bands, you feel me? Oh. She got dancers, she got everything all set up, you feel me? This is not just no, oh. you feel me? And like, yeah, so basically they did that and she was like, no, like, but y'all aren't on the show then, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And oh no, cause they were like, they were like, and if we're not first, we don't want to do it. Mm. And like they, and so like, she was like, all right, well then y'all not going to do it. You know what I mean? Um, and so for hella years, like once that happened, it was like, or not even for hella years, but that kind of just like put a, put a, a divide in between us. You feel me? Cause now I'm, now I'm lumped in with these whack ass motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that was just that. Um, but the thing was me and Jada were neighbors. All these bros was out in fucking Warner Creek and shit. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so like. Uh, yeah, I, Jay, me and Jada both stayed like down, down the street from Ashby Bar. So let's, let's talk about, um, like your recording process. So <laughs> you, I know I'm going hella deep. Nah. <laughs> 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 like, like official, it's, it's cool though. Hey, um, <laughs> like we just sitting and talking, having a discussion. It's but, so uh, real. That's. I'd be at, bro. I'd be all long winded and shit going into the Genesis. But yeah. <laughs> Some real context. But so let's talk yeah. about like, let's, let's talk about the studio stuff. Like, do you like, yes. are you like into like recording Dolo? Like, I grew up coming up in studios mm -hmm. where you got, you know, you got engineers and you got people in and out and, and it's active. So you go to the studio, you mm -hmm. might see anybody come through you know you got a bunch of different genres and stuff do you do you like recording by yourself or would you rather be in the studio throw some ideas or you know what's the process look like i think i do it like depends but i like i like doing it by myself because most of the stuff i do is based off freestyle and so it's based off my comfortability i either gotta be like by myself or with some folks who I know I can be my full self around. You true. know what I mean? I'm true. Um, I feel you. But like studios and you feel me like been in situations where like I, I feel real good. You know what I mean? I used mm -hmm. to be at All Bay mm -hmm. back in the day and now it's B League. Um, and like I was in there and that really like taught me like, all right, bro, you better be on your game like around hella people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that 37 challenge, like I really got to see like that was just me in my room, you know what I mean? Besides, like, the times where, you know what I mean, I had my, my, my folks up in there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that I do I do lean more towards uh, that sacred space with just, like, me cultivating it in a certain way, you know? Yeah, I feel you. That's how I record. Keep it real. You know, I like, I like recording Dola, you know, where you could just play around, mess, do some ideas that you probably wouldn't. Like you said, if you're not comfortable, you may not do that idea that needed to come out. You know, you might right. be a little apprehensive, like, oh, man, cats ain't trying to hear all that. 
Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. I was going to say, uh, what, like, so you, you finished the 37 week challenge. What's the, was there like an idea of like an album at the end of it? Or was it just like, these were just fluid songs? Shit, I mean, like, I felt like it was going to be like this whole project. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I wasn't trying to make an album like from the jump. Like, I was just like, I just need to challenge myself to like get over that hump of perfection that that mm. we hella artists get stuck on. Yes, sir. Um, you feel me? So it was like, I know at the end of this, there's going to be songs and I'm like, fuck that song. Why did I do that shit? <laughs> and then there's going to be, but like, even if I come out with, even if I come out with one song at the end of that whole thing, then I'm like, man, that shit is my shit. Like that encapsulates my whole sound. Anybody hears that song, they're like, yes, this bruh. And they'll, they'll know, you feel me? They'll know. Um, like, I felt like that was going to be worth it, even if there was one. And I think that ultimately I came, there's probably like, a, there's a good 10, I, I fuck with, I fuck with all of those songs, but I feel like there's, there's a strong, there's a strong, like, little core. Um, mm -hmm. a, a core, probably like 10 of them or something that are like, these really like are the essence, you know what I mean? These are the essence. Um, but nah, kind of afterwards, bro, like I was kind of drained, you know what I mean? <laughs> like mm. I, that was eight and a half months of every week, um, just doing, and like, that's, it seemed like it was every Monday, but to drop on Spotify every Monday, you got to have that song done at least three days True. before Monday. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was, a, it was like a thing. Like there were certain times where it wasn't on Spotify on Monday, on Monday you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, but the goal was like to be able to have it on all platforms every Monday. Um, I remember the first Monday that I fucked it up. I was like, fuck, I lost the challenge. <laughs> um, but I kept going. No. But yeah, that was, yeah. That, that, that shit was a trip. I don't know. Having to be an album. I wanted to like break it down into playlists at the end too. Mm. Like because certain ones are way more R and B, certain ones are I'm I'm rapping way more, certain ones are like hella more soft and singy and then you know what I mean? Like there's there's hella different vibes on there. So I was thinking of like breaking it down into playlists and having like, you know, um different little genres of the of of itself. Um but right when right when it finished, bro, I moved back. I was just like working on getting a place to stay, you feel me, getting a car. Um, and I had just done so much that I was just like, all right, let me breathe and get my life real quick. I can do yeah, man. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a a, a, a quick little breather. At least mm -hmm. at least for the people it'll be a breather. For us it won't, but take a <laughs> quick breather for this um a word from our sponsor. Sk -sk 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 What's up with it, man? That was a, a, a word from the, that was a word from the drums and ammo. Dot com people. Man, taking it in, bro. Take us home. Yeah, man. Straight up. So let's let's get into the new project, man. What we doing? What's what, what you know? What what's the whole lead up? What we doing? Talk to us. All right, look. Free motions directed by Illidius. This was uh, I think week eighteen or nineteen off the thirty-seven week channel. It's really dedicated to roots and refuge. I was in Hawaii for a minute, just feeling like FOMO. Like I needed to be back, you know what I mean? And coming back, I took a trip back. Um, and I was able to get my mom, my sister, grandma's old spot, my grandpa's house that he sold now, you feel me? Like, um, so it really feels like it was a time pass last year around this exact same time. So it holds this same kind of weather, this same kind of energy. Um, and it's a little, it's like a little sultry homecoming. I feel oh. like, you know what I mean? Damn. Damn. Yeah. And that, so that was shot in, uh, Berkeley. Yup. Yep. At the crib. Yep. At the crib. Oh. South so, Berkeley. 
and so this is number number 10 of 37 number like 18 or 19 i think 18 i think it's 18 i think it's 18 okay. yeah okay. so it's like directly in the middle like that halfway mark probably the fastest song that i made on the whole project honestly like mm. it was maybe the quick present you feel me while making this shit like i was like not even right there like i was kind of from above it just kind of happened just kind of popped yeah up. Hey, it was crazy that you know that's that that sounds like that's some of the best ideas, you know the ones that you don't plan for, they just kind of happen. That's why that thirty seven thing was important to me because I like music that is like a moment, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm. You hear that song is like it's that that moment rather than like songs that are great too, but like are built up and picked apart and developed for fucking a year or six, Ugh. seven months. You know what I mean? Like that's dope and all, but like now there's just so much energy in it. You know what I mean? There's mm. so much in there. So much like, ah, ah, like, I don't know. I just like these potent moments and then boom, they're out, you know, mm -hmm. big bang real quick. Man. So what during the, during the pandemic, what have you been doing to like take care of your like mental health, you know, your wellness, self care, you know, do you, you know what what's those what's those things you know you got people you talk to you you know you walk your dog what's what's your what's your zone Shit, i kind of wish i had a puppy um <laughs> but my thing is um yoga and meditation uh every day before i go on my phone you feel me mm. um today was actually an exception because i fucked up and uh like today this is actually the first day of the year that uh I didn't do that because I was supposed to set my alarm for like eight so I could get up because my practice would be like an hour to an hour and a half. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, I forgot to set my alarm. So I woke up. It was like 920. I was like, oh, shit, I got to get up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm still going to do my practice um, because honestly, yeah, that's that's a really big part of it. Just like there's so much chaos that goes on in my mind and I need time to just like let it do its thing. Um and so like when I, when I meditate, I can just kind of like let my mind wander. But while I'm like staying grounded and like, I do a certain practice called Vipassana in my, where I like scan my body and shit um, and like every part of my body. Um, but I can also let my mind just kind of like wander. So then in the rest of the day, there's not as much chaos in my mind and as much going on that's like mm -hmm. taking me away. I'm able to be present with that chaos. So then I'm able to be present with like the present uh mm -hmm. the rest of the time you know what i mean and then yeah waking my body up i've been drinking like hot water with lime every time i wake up um you feel me because like i'm really on my i'm really on my like alkaline vegan shit you feel me and have been yeah. since i was like 17 um and yeah that's been that's been real for me i think like you know what i mean it's it's i i'm also like at this point, like definitely let myself be a flexitarian, you know what I mean? And not like mm -hmm. having hell of pressure on myself. Nothing. Um, but like I'd be about my CMOS and my, um, you feel me? My like clearing the mucus, like mm -hmm. just my, my, my health in that way. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Trying to, trying to go on hikes, you know what I mean? Um, trying to get in the sun whenever the fuck it's out. <laughs> The, the, those, those, are, those are really the things. And I think that, but for the majority of the beginning of the pandemic, that's when like I was off grid for a minute, then started the 37 week thing. And so like for that off grid time, I was really just developing my practice. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to do this meditation. And at first I'm just doing that. And then I'm like, all right, I need more. And then I'm like, all right, then I'm going to do this yoga too. And then I'm like, all right, I need a little bit more though. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to incorporate this. And now I have developed like this whole practice for myself Dope. every day. Dope um that really like that really does it for me honestly that's clean so yeah so drums and ammo is about weapons of expression you know like that's what yes. we support do, 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 do. So, you know so that's what it's about so what are mm -hmm. what are your weapons of expression so we got music what are you know what do you uh you do pottery do you do you paint you know what I'm saying? <laughs> do you do you rock climb you know what, what's what's the other weapons of expression you got there that's beautiful i think um when I think of weapons of expression, I think of like love languages to a certain point too. Mm. So like, I'm definitely of like a, a, a acts of service person when it comes to like, not necessarily like the love language that I prefer in people specifically, but like how I show up in the world. I think I'm very like, 
how can I help? What can I do? Oh, mm. here, I got you on, you know what I mean? Nice. So like, I like to, I like to serve, you know what I mean? And that could be in hella different ways. I could just help somebody move. I could just, someone could hit me up and they're being like, I, you know what I mean? I'll just talk to them um, or whatever it is. So I think that's, that's a part um, I'm wanting to utilize my, like, my, the, bro, I have the time and space to meditate. People don't have that shit because I don't have a nine to five job. You feel oh me? I'm, I've been able to be five and thrive off of it. You know what I mean? And so like, I also want to be able to utilize, yeah, that, that privilege, um, to be able to like, just help people. So like, there's a certain mind state that I'm able and a certain lifestyle that I'm able to live. And I want to be able to share that and let people know like that they can do it too, or what, or, or just what's going on with me. Like, I know like recently I wanted to, I'm going to start making appointments to go look at like high rise apartments in San Francisco, just so I can like see what they look like yeah. and visualize viv more vivid. You know what I mean? Ooh. What I want my future to look like. You feel me? I see like you, shit I like you. that, shit like that. I hear you. It was crazy. Yeah. Like I remember as I, um, I was at the dog park and this, this gentleman, he was like, man, it's you, like it's a privilege for you to even have this time to contemplate. You know what I mean? Just to right. even be able to just, like you said, like have that space to just be able to reflect on stuff. Because most people, you know what I mean? Things are moving. So, so everything's moving, so they don't have time to you know really even dig into themselves and you know zone in and just man, like what's going on? You feel me? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So man, let's 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 wrap it, man. What what's the what's the next thing besides? Um, the project. What's the name of the song coming out? The video. Free motions. Free, Free motions. motions. Yeah. What, yep. what else is popping up besides that? Any live stuff? I know everything is kind of going, you know, kind of going back into the shell, back into the, um, you know, back into that bubble. So. Yeah. Any, I know. Uh, I was about to have a viewing of the music video and everything, but oh, yeah, that shit's crazy. Pushed back. Well, I'm about to start doing. I'm doing live shows too, or you know, live streaming shows. So. Maybe you could come Let's by and, uh, and bless us, you know. But man, I'm so, so here for it. I'm so down. Mm -hmm. I'm so down. Mm -hmm. Like so. Yes. What, so what else is going on? What else coming down the pipe? Man, I'm about to start another 37 challenge, man. Ooh. It's about time. You know what I mean? Because how I feel is, it's been um, it's actually coming on like next week. I think it will have been 37 weeks since the 37 week challenge mm. ended. Um, and so my my plan was to start again at that time. Um, except this time. A little bit different instead of 37 weeks 37 collaborators you feel mm. me so i'm gonna collaborate with 37 of just like my favorite folks and they could be they don't all have to be like vocalists you know what i mean maybe it would just be me on the song but it'll be that collaboration with that raw ass videographer um so that's the goal right now you know what i mean and that's where i that's where i want to take it i'm gonna um drop this video and i still have like some like you know, some little things to work out, make sure I can lock in like everybody. I want a really consistent, what I'm really working on, what I need to figure out is like a consistent um, visual aesthetic for the whole thing. I got Because you. that's what I want. I, yeah. want. I want I want. it to be able to be consistent in that way. You know what mm. I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that's huge. But yeah, that's what's next for me right there. That's huge. That's huge. Well, man, yeah. we're going we're gonna to wrap it, man. Thanks for popping up. You know what I mean? Thank you. Dude, I know. The honor is mine, this. bro. Thank you. I want to give I want to give a shout out to Astu. Matter of fact, I'm I'm rocking the Astu shirt right now. Bro, hey, bro, yeah. Astu man changed my life. Astu changed my Whew. life. Man, and continues to do so. But you know, like I I believe like folks like that like we met at her show. So it's like mm -hmm. when you got people like that in the middle, you know, you're bound to meet other folks that kind of like minded. Kind of got that vibe, so I'm gonna give a shout out to Young Stewie, you know, out yes. there in London, out there in London, and then she just um, she was on that movie, the Disney movie, holding it down, twenty something. Yep. You know, Me and so. Tofu produced that joint. Oh, I didn't know that. Dude. Oh, yep. congratulations, Mel. So, yes, sir. Like, I was about to, I was about to shut it down. Give me, give me a little, <laughs> give me a little, uh, um, little background on that. How did that, how that jump off? Cause that's a big, you know, was was that like. I mean, I don't know what other placements you have, but is that like one of your bigger placements? Hell yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> that was Disney Pixar, baby. That's on. Ooh. That's on Disney Plus. That shit was crazy to me. Whoa. Um, yeah, how that worked was like, um, 
honestly, they had made music already. Um, like Tofu, you feel me? He produced Reckless. Uh, mm-hmm. He produced uh, Source of Her, I'm pretty sure, with Salami on the album. Like, mm-hmm. And a few, a few of those tracks. Um, and so they had already been making music together. But basically, when Tofu had moved out here from Brooklyn, um, they was rocking through hella beats. And she was like, you should make music with Isaiah. Mm. Um, and so he came to my show right before I had dropped my album. And so I actually met Tofu through Ostu too, um, cause he, she put him on to me. Um, and then when I lived in Hawaii, he moved out there too. And so one day, like right after I finished my meditation, I just like the moment that I opened my eyes, I, I'm getting a call and it's from Ostu and I haven't talked to her in a minute. And, um, yeah, she's just like, I got this secret thing. I want you and Tofu to work on. I can't tell you what it is, but uh, we go. We gonna talk about it. You down? And I'm like, yeah, I'm down. And then he was down, and we kind of just did a camp. You feel me? Me and me and him, we made hella beats. We mm-hmm. did our thing, mm-hmm. and it ended up being the first beat that we made that uh that they was really like fucking with. And the process was just hella beautiful. Um, going back and forth, we got Mia on the cello. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. shit became a a masterpiece. And so like just being able to work with Astu was like wow, like. She works on a certain level, you know what I mean? Works yeah. with a certain standard, and like you could hear it. You feel me? You could hear it in all of her music. But like, it was it was cool to actually be a part of that process. You know what I mean? Be involved. I was I felt honored the whole time. Yeah, man. She's she's yeah. she's crazy. She's a crazy fucking legend. Mm-hmm. Fucking legend. True indeed. Man, mm-hmm. let's uh let's wrap it, man. This is DJ Ambush with Isaiah Mustafa. Isaiah yes, with the, Isaiah with the hair. We gotta mention that. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the whole. That was that was the whole hype right there, and we're gonna this, the the show is called this that and the third, drumsandammo.com. Catch us and you'll catch that video free motions on drumsandammo.com. Check it out. Hey man, have a good one, man. It's good to see you. You know, thank I'm, you so I'm, much, man. For I'm, real, I'm, I'm gonna see you in the physical, man. Be easy. You know what I'm saying? Please, I hope you get in that sun today, man. Have a oh, blessed day. Yes, sir, man. Hey man, peace. Be easy, man. Peace, peace. Water. Yes, water, sir. water, water. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was him, man. That was it. DJ Ambush. The show is called This, That, and the Third. Drumsandammo.com. Please subscribe to the YouTube and the Spotify and Apple Music, all that. We will catch y'all on the next one. Easy, easy.